All right, this is going to uh, be a video showing you how to make a graph on a computer, that, any computer that has access to the internet using Google Sheets. Um, I'm going to start by just typing in google.com and um, going to this page. This is actually the regular Google page, but it's just got monkeys on it for some reason today. Um, I'm going to click on this little icon up here that has all these boxes, um, and it's going to open all these different um, applications that I have access to. I'm going to click on the one called Sheets. It's the green thing that looks like a page. Um, and it'll open all of my files. This may look different depending on um, what files you have created in Google Sheets already. Um, but for everybody, um, you can choose to start a new spreadsheet by clicking on this big plus sign here. So click on that big plus sign and it will start a brand new file that looks like this. The first thing that we want to do is name that file um, with uh, something that's going to tell us what experiment that we did. I like to use um, something like the title of a graph. I would call this, depending on your experiment, it's going to be different, but I would call mine like the effect of mass on length for a rubber band. Um, and then I'm going to put my name at the end, um, Mr. Kramer, so I know. Um, your teacher may have specific instructions on how to name that file, um, but this is one example of how to do that. The next step we want to do is use these first two columns of the spreadsheet. Um, spreadsheets are laid out in rows. This is an example of row one, then row two, row three and columns, column A, column B, column C. So we want to organize our data just like we organize it in a data table where there are columns next to each other. It is extremely important that you follow these directions that I'm about to give you in how the data is entered in the columns um, carefully because if you don't then you won't be able to make any graphs as we, as we go on forward, or your, your graphs will look a lot different than they should. Um, begin by typing the names of your variables um, in the headings of the columns. Um, I'm going to start by calling the first variable mass. Um, that's my independent variable when I hung these masses from the rubber bands. And my second variable will be called length. Remember, we're looking at the effect of mass on length. So the independent variable is mass, dependent variable is length. I can, if I want to, go in and add the units here in parentheses. Um, so I could say the mass is in units of kilograms, and we could say the length is in units of centimeters. Um, that's optional, um, but we want to make sure that we do not enter units on any of the numbers that we're about to record in, these data ta in this data table. So for example, um, my, uh, the beginning of the experiment was I didn't hang anything from the rubber band, I just measured the length of it, and it was 41 centimeters. Notice I did not put units on this number. I left it as a number. That is very important. You cannot put units on these numbers or else your graph won't come out correctly. Um, I actually measured three different rubber bands, um, and they were similar in length but not exactly the same length. I'm going to enter all those values into my spreadsheet. Um, you should continue entering those numbers. I have um, a bunch of numbers already entered, so I'm just going to copy and paste them in to my uh, spreadsheet, but if, if you have fresh data here, you should pause the video and enter all the values that you collected for your own experiment, um, whatever the experiment was, into two columns. Notice none of these numbers have units. This is very, very important. If you're going to put units on this spreadsheet, you need to put them at the top of the column in the first row and nowhere else. After you have these two columns of numbers with your independent variable in the first column and your dependent variable in the second column, you want to select the whole thing. Um, use your mouse to select the entire collection of data and then click on insert and scroll down to chart. You can also click on this little picture of a, of a chart here. That's kind of a shortcut. But if you want to remember, you are inserting a chart. 
Um, go ahead and click on that and something like this will come up. You'll have a bunch of different um, opportunities for different types of charts you want to make. You want to click on the one that has a bunch of dots on it. The one that looks like this. This is called a scatter plot. We've been making these in, in our class um, by hand and we want to figure out how to make these on the computer as well. Um, you'll notice this look is looking pretty good already. Um, but there are some things that we not need to change. For example, um, this um, x-axis or this mass axis is starting from zero and is scaled consistently. That looks good, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, that's a consistent scale. This length axis is consistent, but it is not starting from zero. So we need to change that. In order to change that, click on customization. Um, and you want to scroll down. Um, we can actually do a lot of things from this window that we'll, that we'll want to uh, think about. But you want to choose the axis that you want to scale correctly. Um, and in this case, the horizontal axis, that is the axis that is pointing left and right, the mass axis, that's all right. I'm going to choose the left vertical axis to change. That's this one here. Um, and I'm going to change the min and the max values for this left vertical axis to something that makes sense for my data. Most importantly, I need to start at zero for this particular data. I need to include zero, zero somewhere in my graph. We know that's important. And I can leave this as 80 um, because that is going to hold all the data that, that I've collected here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and insert this. There are some other things I can change here. For example, the title. Um, and some other things. I'm going to not change those things for now, um, but know that we can use this window later on as a shortcut to do a bunch of things to make our graph the first, the correctly the first time around. Um, so I do have a pretty good graph now. Um, if you entered units in these two, um, in in the top of both of those columns, then those units will show up here. If not, you can click on this and change the name of your um, title here. I can also make the font size bigger here if I want to make it easier to see. I could even change the color if I want it to be um, some color that I think is attractive. Um, I can also do that by clicking on this axis down here. I can make it bigger if I want to. I can even make it bold um, and I can change the color of that as well. Um, you may um, Depending on what your teacher is asking for, you may want to uh, either leave these black or or do something that's appropriate for the experiment. Last thing I want to change is the is the title here. Um, this isn't uh, the best title I could use. I'm going to actually enter a title that's uh, sort of an answer to my research question. I'm going to say this is the effect of the independent variable mass on. Um, the length of the rubber band. So if I just enter that in, in here, that will change the title of my graph, and I can use that title as we go forward. Last thing we want to do here is think about what pattern we see in this data. Um, and then for this particular experiment, we actually had some interesting discussions in class, like whether this really looks like a straight line or not. I think that you could make an argument that it does look like a straight line pattern, um, you could also make an argument that it looks like a curved line pattern. Um, and the computer allows us to fit either a straight line or different types of curved lines to that pattern. So what we want to do is click on this, and if we click somewhere on the points themselves, you'll get this little menu. Um, and we can click on trend line. Right now there's no trend line. I want to enter... Um, a linear trend line. We're going to start with a linear trend line and see what it looks like. Um, this is a pretty good fit. Um, that is, it kind of, kind of, sort of comes close to the points. Um, and we, we ended up using a straight line trend line for this uh, experiment in class to make some predictions. Um, if you're looking at your data and it's obvious that the straight line does not fit, um, you can also choose a different shape of a trend line, but you got to be really, really, really careful. Um, sometimes your data will be exponential, um, 
but those tend to be very special relationships that we want to actually discuss as exponent, exponential relationships. You don't just want to choose it kind of just because it te seems to fit better. Um, a polynomial is something that has um, some squared values in it or some cubed values in it. We very rarely are going to see anything bigger than a second order polynomial, which means something with a squared value in it. You almost never, ever, ever want to choose third order, fourth order, fifth order. We'll, we'll never see these things um, in our science class. But sometimes we will see a second order polynomial. And you'll, you can see in this case, like that curved line actually does seem to fit this pattern a little better than my straight line did. Um, I'm going to go back to the straight line um, because um, it's more in line with what we're doing in physics class right now. But know that sometimes you may come across experiments where you want to add a curved line instead, and that's possible here. Um, the last thing we want to do um, is click on, we want to ch actually change the name of this trend line so it, um, so it shows us the equation that we're actually thinking about here. If you click on the triangle in the upper right hand corner of the graph and go to advanced edit, um, you can get back to that screen where we saw the customization earlier on. This lets us do some more interesting things besides just change the scale of the axis. If you scroll all the way down, so I, this is what it looks at the top. I can change the title and stuff. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says trend line, you'll notice I can choose a linear or a, or a nonlinear trend line. And this is the important part. If I click on label, I can say use equation. Um, and this will actually tell me the equation that the computer has calculated for this relationship. Um, in this case, it's a linear relationship, so, so I can see it looks like y equals mx plus b. Um, we don't want to leave these y's and x's, but we do want to use the numbers that the computer has calculated. So the first step I'm going to take is actually just write down on a separate piece of paper um, y equals 23.79 times x. This little star means times x plus 38.314. The computer doesn't know that you have calculated length and mass here, that your experiment is about the effect of mass on length. It's just given you y's and x's. We need to actually use these numbers to change the name of the graph. So after we've, um, after we've written use equation here and after we've written down these numbers, y equals, or written down, sorry, excuse me, the entire equation, we want, after you've actually written those down, we want to change this name back to a custom name. And we want to use these numbers, the slope and, and uh, intercept value, the slope and initial value that we recorded with the actual variable names. So instead of writing y equals, I'm going to write length equals. Then I'm going to use my slope. Instead of actually using 23.7, I'm going to round to what seems like a reasonable value. 24 seems like a reasonable value here. I'm rounding to an integer value of centimeters per kilogram um, times, again, like I can, I can press shift 8. Shift 8 gives me this star, which often means times. And then I'm going to enter, instead of x, the variable that actually that's actually graphed on the x-axis, which is mass, not the unit kilograms, but the variable name. And then I will add 38 centimeters as my initial length. Once I click Update, thank you, um, this equation will actually appear on my graph. Um, and it doesn't just use y's and x's, it actually uses the variable names that appear um, on the graph itself. The last thing we want to do um, before publishing this graph or making it available to other people to look at is if we click on this um, legend, you could call it, we could double click on it. Um, and you notice this says right over here, that's telling you that's trying to cram this long equation into the right side of the graph. We want to change this to either top or bottom or inside, depending on what you um, think is best for your data. I'm going to choose 
um, inside for this particular um, experiment. And notice that puts this entire equation on one line. Uh, it makes it really easy to read. And it makes it clear that these blue dots here are for the length measurements um, for these particular masses. And the, the blue line is for um, that equation. If we want to change the color of this line, we can go ahead and do that. And this, line, this color will change also. Um, so you can play around with the colors of things and make them as, uh, as you like them to be.